Okay, judges, we just finished with Cody, uh, finalist number one. We are on to Ray Barons, Raymond Barons. I think I think he goes by Ray. Um, so we're going to jump into his interview. Um, Ray comes from Washington. Looking at his um, application, Ray had a pretty epic year taking his, his son on a caribou hunt, uh, doing a, you know, a bison hunt, which is pretty exceptional. I've, like that's something that like not very many hunters can ever say they get to do. Uh, so he had a pretty unusual season, but had some really, really cool stories along the way. So I'm going to bring Ray in and uh, we'll, we'll spend about the next 20, 25 minutes uh, jumping through his interview. So let's welcome Ray Barons from Washington for a uh, finalist interview number two. What was the highlight of this year for you? Like if you were to take everything it doesn't have to be a hunt it could be something inside of the hunt itself but what was the the biggest highlight like when you think about this season what pops into your head oh um i have to go away from one of my hunts the my biggest highlight was that i got my son with me um for quite a few first uh, i took him with me to alaska and never never thought that a 14 year old would hunt a caribou and he got himself a caribou but that was his first antlered animal. Um, the really exciting highlight was that his first buck later that year was in the same field that I shot my first buck in 30 years ago. So uh -huh. I thought that was pretty awesome that they were able to take him back, well, up in there, get him lined out. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, the, I suppose the direct counter. Uh, to that question, did you have a hunt this year where you just, you know, you were done, you felt like giving up, going home? Oh, yeah. So I was down in middle of Idaho hunting the, the Selway. And that's that's a brutal country if you've ever seen that. It's straight steep down in canyons. Um, I was hunting a four-day weekend there every day, um, heading down the mountain and not seeing any deer, I'd head back up three miles up to truck, go to camp. I was getting so discouraged about how many deer that I expected to see down there, didn't see any. And, you know, about day two and a half, I was thinking I should just pack it up and head home. And um, I'd go back to camp and I'd look at my map and try to figure out where else could I go. And I end up heading down to other canyons and walking down deep down by the Salmon River. And I did find some deer, but the way I drew myself out of that is I had to keep going. It it almost made me quit. It was how much hard work I was putting in and not seeing a thing. That's that's the most encouraging part when you have high expectations to get out of the woods and not see anything. It's just so discouraging. Awesome. Yeah. Um, my question to you is to get a trade seasons with one of the finalists, who would that be and why? Um, I was liking Cody's season, you know, he's just now getting into uh, big game and deer and elk with his family. His whole family's on board with him. I think that's awesome as I don't have that luxury of having all my family involved and I'm the only one. My brother kind of hunts a little bit. So I really like that Cody's got his whole family aspect going mm -hmm. with him. It, it sure makes makes it a nice um, hobby if you can have a lot of people with within your little family circle going out with you. And, and I'm missing that. So I kind of envy Cody's uh, season. Gotcha. Good answer. Yeah. Hi, Ray. Um, what is something you learned this season? Um, <clears throat> well, I learned more about myself, actually. Um, my problem was that I'd always, you know, dig myself in a hole. I would, I'd get out and get these high expectations for these hunts and I'd push hard to get it done. Um, I would go down like, like at the Selway, I would, I would go out there and imagine that I would see these, these deer out on the, on the hillsides and I would wait, mark my way to them. And after a while I wouldn't see them. So I would continue down these steep mountains, continuing further from the truck, knowing, knowing by the end of the hunt, I got to walk back up. Mm. So I learned the hard way that I, uh, I, uh, We'll go over the next ridge and forget that I've got a lot of work to get back. And so I found out that I'm stubborn and I won't, I won't quit. And that kind of hurt me a lot. I end up getting down to the bottom of these canyons and 
oh shoot, it's dark. I got three miles up north to go up. And um, I was made it all the way to the truck and I would end up throwing up because I was straight up for three and a half miles. And that's what I learned about myself is how I am not very, very smart about stop uh, to stop <laughs> this canyon. Mm -hmm. Well, smart and motivated can get, those lines can get blurred a little bit. So that was a good story. I know you mentioned a few times, like, you know, not being able to find what you're looking for, but what was kind of like your biggest adversity throughout the year? Like if you can pinpoint one thing, what, what would you kind of put that towards? Um, mostly that I jumped into some hunts of different species and terrain that I've never experienced. I used to, while well, you watch them on YouTube and get excited to go on these uh, particular, there's four particular ones that I got to go on. Um, I didn't know what the Alaska tundra was like. People have told me hundreds of times and I've watched YouTube, they explained how bad it is. And, and I hunt in Idaho and Washington. And, and so I was like, well, you know, I'll figure it out. And that was a big challenge for me is to figure out that that train is, you can't prepare for that if you, if you haven't experienced it. Um, along with the the tundra was hunting these new animals i've never hunted caribou so when i i got out there i had to learn them on the fly while they're walking and what what their mannerisms are how to know if they're going to run and eventually it, it all started to come together but we had to learn it on the fly and that's the same with that um the selway hunt i had no idea how to hunt mule deer on those canyons and i didn't had never been down steep canyons and, and up that far before so i was kind of caught off guard more than anything so that was a big adversity for me sweet thanks so ray what are you uh what are you looking forward to this next year do you have any like expectations or challenges coming up that you're looking forward to or hunts um well we talked about that because i had a great year and my wife let me get out and hunt a lot so i thought i told her i'd slow it down and wouldn't travel as much um my goal i was going to put in for montana speed goat see if we can get drawn if not um my goals for this year i've got three kids now that are able to hunt they all got their license now so i'm going to make up for cole's season this year my youngest son um last year he didn't get didn't get the shot that he wanted to and i felt really guilty so this year i'm going to take him out mostly more than anything and get him on a couple deer Going forward into this uh, next season, working through the off season, is there anything that you're going to do differently this off season to better prepare yourself? Yeah. So, yeah, you're wearing that Mountain Tough shirt. I I didn't really take the, the working out too seriously. I just used hiking as a as my workout. But ever since I saw your app or uh, your link on the the Hunt League app, really started hitting it hard. And so my goal is start building some leg muscle, building the heart muscle up. I need to get my cardio up. And that's probably my main thing I'm going to address is I did. I thought I was tough, you know, and get out to the cellway and I was throwing up on the way up the mountain. I, I realized that what I thought was in shape isn't what, isn't what it uh, should be. Okay. Okay, Ray, uh, since I, I won Hunt League last year. One yeah. of my favorite things I've learned so far is there's just those hunts that it's just when you're adding things into the hunt log, it's just like everything's falling into place. And I keep almost going back to just remember that hunt. What would be one of the hunt logs from this last year that you like stick stick to because so much happened, you, you put so much into it and it's just like that day is always there. What Which hunt log would, would be the highlight? Um. It'd be that black bear hunt in Idaho. I um ended up doing that whole hunt and I I got so excited I had to go back date some stuff to throw in there because I'd done the whole hunt and things were happening. Um so I tried to go back into that that um that hunt and then start adding the events as I have it on my camera. We recorded the hunt, so I just went back and thought about what happened when and how oh Cole was with me, he's my eight year old son. Yeah, here he is walking up that that steep hill. We were, I think that was four and a half miles and thirty six hundred feet elevation gain. 
there was no flat spot. So we spent one day hiking. We got there like three at night and hiked until dark. And uh, that poor fella, he made it all the way up there without complaining. I had him pack his own pack. And as soon as we get up there, as soon as we get to camp, we set up this camp. We find out that uh, you can actually drive up there. It was ridiculous. <laughs> we sat there. We're looking at this so The whole family is up there on side by side. And all the roads we tried were put in. So this is the, the Alpine Lake bear hunt we went on. Um, we got up there, and within 10 minutes of the tent set up, we spotted that big boar right across that 1,000 yard you see right there. Mm -hmm. We just ate all that bear grass. And uh, with you know an hour of us trying to think what we're going to do, we got hit by a huge hailstorm, and it was so bad that we lost the bear. And uh, about three hours later, well, those people took us down to the bottom. We got our four wheeler and drove back up. And we came back, and we couldn't find the bear for about an hour. And then there's that shot. Cole picked him out finally. That was so cool. Yeah. He picked out that bear. Like, Dad, I found the bear. And he got so excited. So we worked our way. We got about 450 yards from that bear. And you can see that dust cloud just right above him. Now, that was. This is a. This right here is that second shot. Um, didn't hear. Heard the report, so I thought I'd hit him. But he just ran and ran and ran. And we didn't find any blood. We tracked every every log he went over. So I'm not sure what happened there, but just overshot him, and then the second shot got him to run off. Mm, awesome. But yeah, that was we were stuck in thunder, storms, rain. We had to hunker down. We got so soaking wet that we had to go back to the truck and get more dry gear. And we went up to the truck up there again. Man, awesome! Thank you for taking us through that that's a good story um so sometimes you go hunting right and you don't harvest animals so what is your definition of a successful hunt um i think if we get out there and if you're seeing or you do all your research and you you have this big anticipation of what the hunt's going to be like and then if you're seeing results of your your um you're studying, like you're, you're no use in tracks, you're seeing animals. You're not just completely hunting in a parking lot or something. And you see that all your research worked out and there's animal tracks and you saw some animals and, you know, the kids had a great experience, you know, teaching them stuff. Or you learn something new. And I think that's pretty dang successful. There, I've spent, that's why I was explaining to a lot of people that, that I talk about at work. They think I go out there and slaughter animals. And I said, most of my hunts, are me being out in the woods, walking around, looking at tracks, looking at animals, and one minute out of the entire hunt, maybe once every three months is a kill. And so that's one split second. So that doesn't make the success. The success is the entirety of your season and how fun that day is. Hmm. Love it. So obviously this was a, a pretty good season. So kind of compare this one to your previous season and kind of what makes this one special and uh, kind of what contributed to your success this season uh, overall. Well, this season is a lot different because I started getting that uh, midlife crisis feeling where I thought that I'm not going to be able to have these cool hunts anymore. I'm going to be start breaking down my body. So I wanted this year to be an epic year. Um, last year I went down to Texas with my family and hunted hogs and you know, did the elk and deer hunt here in Idaho. Um, that was just a, just, you know, over the counter generic hunts. And I wanted to do something that has been on my bucket list. So I went through my grandpa's album and I was like, he's killed a caribou. I should go do that. been wanting to do that for years. Um, and wanted to hunt the bison. I didn't know where they were or how to find them. I watched Randy Newberg hunt one. So got on the internet and they actually had a bison ranch right next to our, where we used to live in Idaho and it's only 25 miles from us now so you know it, it was all starting to come together I put so much planning into this season that everything every season I wanted to get to worked out pretty dang smooth I, I went down we did the bison hunt then we went over to hunt bear and went to Alaska and I don't know if I'll have a season come together quite like this one did I there's so much logistics going into this season planning 
you know, dates and bounces those off your work schedule, your life with your family. And it all came together pretty dang smooth. And that's why I think it's a pretty awesome season. Yeah, it definitely was, man. Jealous of the Alaska trip. So nicely done. That, was, that wasn't that bad either. I'm going to explain that another day, but that wasn't that um, bad to get into. I did a lot of research and found out I can get under there for do it yourself for under $5,000. And next year, and if I do it next time, it'll be a little cheaper. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Oh, you're welcome. Nice. Well, uh, we've got like three minutes left here. Do you have Do you have any final thoughts or anything you want to want to add to this? Um. Well, yeah. I um. I'd mentioned before that this this Hunt League app. I'm glad you're all part of this. This is an amazing little contraption he's got building here. Um. I guys, I said it said it before. I can't find this community anywhere. I've I'm a little ashamed of myself to post, you know, dead pictures on, of a pig picture on Instagram or, um, or any hunts because of the flack you get. And this, this community here, I'm, I'm more than happy to comment and talk about hunting. And then mm -hmm. instead of getting any negative comments, you're going to get a fist bump and everybody's going to be excited for you. Uh, I can't find this atmosphere anywhere. So when I joined it, I think two years ago, or even last year, I didn't really know what to do with it, but it's starting to grow on me. And now I've, I've got my brother and my son and uh, a couple other guys at work are joining it. I'm like, you guys really got to try this. This is actually our little, our little niche. We can't get this community on Instagram, Facebook. So I love the way that this is all coming together. Agreed. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. That is uh, definitely awesome. Just, you know, with that, that last minute 20 there, uh, is there anything that you know you think you could do, uh, you know, conservation or community-wise, uh, locally to kind of bring uh, the community feel and hunt league out just into your day-to-day -day life? Um, well, I actually do uh, host a coyote derby every year, and we have a bad coyote problem with you know all of the, the the baby cows, and then about I guess there was a statistic about how many deer are slaughtered by uh, coyotes when they have their babies about 19, 19 beer a, a year, 19 uh, ponds. So I started putting on this uh, coyote derby to help with the management of that. And mm. that's pretty cool. Bring all these people in from the community that are we're all like-minded. We all show up in our camouflage and we BS for a little bit and then we go out on our derby. And, and it's a nice way to meet all these other hunters and that you didn't even know we're in the community. I really enjoy people. So that works out great for me. That's really awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Ray. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, thank you. This is so rewarding to be considered for this. This is weird for me. Yeah, thank you're making you it tough on us, making it very tough, tough on us here. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to tell Grayson real quick that uh, I'd watched your other your show from last year. Um, yeah, I was like, I I agree with you. I totally grew up on uh, Primo's VHS. That's all I did was watch those at 10, 12 years old. Um, I learned to call elk off the hyperlip single with a cassette tape. And, you know, I was I was hooked a big game right off the primos, and that's that's all I watched and up until they stopped making this. Pretty pretty good way to get into it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. All right, so we just finished with Ray. Um, judges, what sticks out about Ray? I really liked his ability to be introspective. You know, that's something that I definitely get in, in the woods is just being able to see more about myself. And then the other thing that really stuck out was just the sense of community that it seemed like he was missing out on until he found Hunt League. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really cool thing to see. You know, I've, I was lucky, fortunate enough to grow up in a family of people that hunt. So it, it's kind of eye-opening whenever you – find somebody that doesn't have like that community of support and to where they almost feel alienated for hunting. So I think that's something that's really special. Yeah. I really, uh, I really liked how, you know, he kind of, he was pushing through the season, uh, you know, just coming up on cresting a ridge and throwing up uh, <laughs> you know, that that's, I mean, that's, it's, I've been there. It's brutal. Uh, and just like pushing through, uh, especially in that country it just says a lot about kind of his desire to succeed 
And I really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, one thing that he's pulling on my heartstrings with is the coyote derby. It's like, I, I'm super passionate about my predators, coyote stuff. So he's, when he's trying to bring the community to help, you know, with the deer population, it's just like, that was like really cool. Um, the other thing that I find myself doing is those long hikes back to the truck um, alone or, you know, just when it's quiet, you know, you just, you just think, and you're just out there just, you know, it sucks at times, but it's also something you always look back and you appreciate. And uh, those, we always talk about, you know, sharing the woods with the, with everyone around us, but there's those times that's like, you got to be alone out there and just soak it in. And it seemed like he had a lot of that this year and you could just really tell that it just, it really just sank in with him this year that it was super precious for those times of being out with the sun, but also just being alone in God's creation. So super yeah. cool. You do start to realize like he's at that age and I feel it. I don't know how old he is. I, I know it's on his application probably, but like he's I'm there. That season. What, what'd you say, Tucker? He's up there with us probably. Yeah. <laughs> you start that reality of like, my body is starting to break down. Like it is harder to do these miles. Like, and you've got to do the training and you've got to put in that work and you can't just expect to go out there. But it's like, you know, like I have that thought about like, you know, you're applying for these goat and sheep hunts and it's like, I may not, I may not draw that tag for another 20 years. And if I draw that tag in 20 years, what good is that going to be for me? Cause I don't even know if I can climb those Hills 20 years from now, you know? So I, I think, I think he's recognizing you know, the season of life that he's in and taking advantage of it, both with his boys, you know, taking his young boy on that bear hunt, 3,500 ele foot elevation. That's no joke. Like to take an eight year old with a backpack, it would definitely be discouraging getting to the top of that hill and seeing a razor up there that drove there. <laughs> be like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, you know, but he made the most of it. So anyway, Audrey, what do you have? What, what, you, what sticks out to you uh, with Ray? Yeah, going off of what you were saying, I like that his honesty about, you know, I looked at my grandpa's book and he hunted a caribou, so I wanted to hunt a caribou, so I just went and did it. <laughs> He's like, I didn't know anything about the tundra, but I figured it out. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. He figured it out the hard way, that's for sure. If you listen to his whole story, there's a podcast that we did. I mean, that thing was brutal. Like he was like, yeah, we just thought we'd walk five miles. He was like, yeah, you're walking five miles on like wet basketballs where you're like stepping and it's just sinking in and every step, you don't know how deep you're going to sink. And I'm like, yeah, that's no, that's, that's no joke up there. All right, Tucker, what do we got? And then Josh will, uh, hopefully he'll call in one second. Cool. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it was funny. He mentioned kind of like the midlife crisis thing. Right. And, uh, and then sharing a lot of these things with his kids, like you touched on him being older, right. That was something I kind of, I understand, right? We're all getting a little older as the years go by, but uh, kind of sharing all this stuff with his kids and, and raising young outdoorsmen, you know, I didn't have that growing up. I kind of picked it up way later in life. Uh, so it's really cool that he's passing all that down to his kids and, and being patient, right? Patient, uh, having a young hunter is, is a real thing when you're also trying to tag out. So I, I definitely appreciate the stories with the kids and, and, and just passing down what, what he's learned over the years. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if this should be a factor or not a factor when it comes to the outdoors in the year, but you know, you have Cody who did all of his hunts, you know, within a relatively close distance to his house, the deer hunt that they did with his brother, that was a couple hours from home where they actually had to travel and kind of backpack in and do all that stuff. But his elk hunting and things like that, they could leave work and then go still elk hunt that same night. Whereas, you know, when you, when you look at Ray, I mean, he's doing, he's doing a coyote hunt. He's doing a derby thing. He's going to Idaho. He's going to Alaska. He did a whole lot of stuff this year, you know, that, that includes travel and kind of exotic hunts. And I know we've discussed this as a, you know, as, as a judge's, um, you know, we definitely don't want to make whoever wins this be the person that gets to do the most exotic hunts, you know, because who spent the most money on their travel and trips. Cause we want this to be able to be, Hey, this is anybody's hunt and anybody's game, you know, just put together the best season of your life and tell us why it's special. And you got a shot at the prize. So I still, it wasn't just about him. So even the trip to Alaska that he did, you know, he took his son and he, you know, like the, the place that he did his bison hunt, he took his son. And that's, that was a place that years, 30 years ago, he had gotten a deer, his first deer. And he, he took his son there to get his, like some of those connections, I think just made this year, 
it, it sticks out beyond just, okay, you did a really cool exotic hunt. It's like, man, you did some stuff this year that was really, you know, really cool.